Hello boys and girls, once again interview with a difference and today I am here with another Arsenal legend. This means so much to me, Super Kevin Campbell. Thank you for joining me man. Oh, you're welcome, good to see you. Yeah, wow. Seriously, when I was growing up, this guy, um, I remember you from the youth days before mm -hmm. you came into the first team. And this was of course before Ian Wright and everything came along. And your record at Arsenal, over 200 games, 59 goals, a league title, FA Cup, League Cup, and a Cup Winners' Cup. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad CV. Not a bad CV, especially for a fan. I was an Arsenal fan since I was knee-eye to a grasshopper. He used to come up to the, to the stadium and couldn't afford to get in me and my pals from Brixton. But we used to slip into the North Bank with about 20 minutes, 15 minutes to go just to watch you know, our idols. For somebody like myself to be able to say that I've played 200 games, scored 59 goals, and played a part for Arsenal Football Club. It's my, that's my life, man. That's, that's my crazy. life. Yeah, that's stuff that dreams are made of. For people like me that have never been fortunate enough, or some people would say not good enough, um, I still think that I was, but I just was never noticed. Never noticed. That, that's what that it, happens. That's what it was. That, that, <laughs> that's what I would say anyway. But what stands out for you out of those four? The, the league. The league. The league. That, 91. Was, that was my first. Well, don't forget, I was actually in the squad for 89. Yes. I was in the squad. Remember. People won't remember. Uh, we, we actually, the, myself, Paul Davis and the boys who weren't part, because weren't part, there was only two subs at the time, yeah. we all sat behind the goal with the Arsenal fans. Yeah. And with, I think it was five minutes to go, we had to climb over the wall and then make our way round to the, by the dugouts. Yeah. And when Michael went through, I don't know if, if you ever see the footage, when Michael goes through and scores, Somebody runs on the pitch and police grab them. You see your feet. That was me. I was off. <laughs> I was off. That was me. My head had gone. The police grabbed me and they realised I was actually part of the Arsenal party. And you're a player. You know, I'm a player. So they dragged me back. You know, you can't do that. So I went and we were standing like in the tunnel. Everyone was buzzing. I mean, for me, that moment was so significant. So being part of that, obviously I didn't play but I was part of it. I travelled up the Friday. Dave Rollcastle, bless him, picked me up that Friday morning wow. in Brixton at, at, at half past five. We went up to, to Highbury. We got on the coach with Kit Mantoni, Donnelly, and then we travelled up to London Colney, picked up the rest of the squad, and I, I had the journey. My, my mindset about 89 was, was from a different angle because I wasn't, I wasn't really part of it, but I was. Yeah. I'd done a lot of the training with the team and stuff, so I'm seeing things like, you know, going up there. We went up there, and most of the journey, we were watching the 1971 FA Cup final, where George Graham reckons he got a touch on the ball. Ah, yes. And we were debating that for about 25 minutes. Yeah, the Charlie George saying, final. Yeah, he was saying, did you see my touch? And everybody's kicking up. No, you never touched it. He was kept reminding <laughs> it on the video. He was crazy. But you know, going up there and witnessing 89 was great. And then to, obviously Liverpool won it the next year. And then to, to actually play a part in winning a title yeah. for Arsenal. Being an Arsenal fan, being somebody who's come up through the ranks, who couldn't even afford to get in the ground. And now my first medal I'm getting is for Arsenal and it's a title. I swear to you, it's, if I just won that, that's my life. That's it. it do you think the experience of witnessing 89 kind of put you in good stead for 91? 100%. I mean, look, when George Graham, when I was, when I joined up 16 YTS, George Graham, that was George Graham took over. Mm. And i never forget, he sat everybody down. I mean, you had the likes of Kenny Sanson, you had Graham Ricks, you had um, Tom Woodcock, you had some you know, big hitters like, you know? And Rowcastle and Thomas and all those guys were there and they were, they were youngsters coming up, hungry, Tony Adams. George Graham said to the team, he said, look, if you ain't prepared to work and you ain't prepared to fight and you ain't prepared to go and challenge Liverpool, you best leave now. Because wow. we are focused. And he said, oh, we were sat on the floor, cross legs, all you will get a chance if you put the work in. That was all I needed to hear. That's Myself, insane. Dave Villiers, everybody, we were, we were so hungry. So the way the, the system was going, and the way he was giving the youngsters a chance and the aggression that he had for the job and, and the way he was training the lads, 
listen, it was inevitable, it was happening. I just wanted my chance, man. I just wanted my chance. After 89, I had a bit between my teeth, went out on loan two times, hungry to make it, hungry to be a part of it. And luckily, I was. You did. And then, obviously, we move a little bit further on from there. And I think of the Cup Winners' Cup. That, for me, is still something special. A lot of people, again, there seems to be this big thing in this modern age with trophies. They kind of dismiss trophies now. The FA Cup, you know, the Cup Winners' Cup, because it's not around no more. Oh, it's nothing. Even the Europa League, I've been guilty myself. More on the banter side of things that when I see Manchester United in the Europa League, ha-ha, you're in the Europa League. But now I'm in it this season myself, I'm actually quite enjoying it. And I'm actually sitting there thinking, you know what? Why are we disrespecting these trophies? Because as a player, winning trophies... Winning trophies, look, they, they, and normally, you, don't, you only get the opportunity to win four trophies. And you've won them. No, but I mean, in a season. You know, in a season, yeah, when yeah, you start yeah. a season, you really have an opportunity to win four trophies. Mm. And that's against everybody. Yeah. Realistically, if you take one, you've done well. Yeah. Because there's everybody's after these trophies. Yeah. Obviously, we dropped out of the... Uh, we were playing in the European Cup, dropped out of the European Cup to play in the Cup Winners' Cup. But the teams that were in the Cup Winners' Cup that, that at the time were top teams. So you can't dismiss it. It was an important part of our progress as a, as a squad mm. to be able to play in Europe, to win in Europe, to know how it's done. It just don't happen. But under George Graham, he said, look, we're going to play the Arsenal way. We're going to take it to him. And that's what we've done. one nil to the Arsenal. You know, we had some great wins. Paris Saint-Germain were a top team at the, at the time as well. Yeah. It was a fantastic trophy to win that cup with us. That's what I mean. So I brought a couple of things along with me, right? And hopefully yeah. they can keep up with us. Now, people that don't know about the history of me with Arsenal, my dad's been going since the 40s and it's been passed down through my great granddad to my granddad to my father. And it's now down to my children. And Let me check you there, right? One second. Let me just tell everybody. <laughs> the first time I see this man here, right? I think you were about eight, Probably. seven, eight. It 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 done a little move to get in the. It was the underground car park under the clock end. Yeah. And I was in. Me and Wright were going to be going somewhere after the game, and I was sat in Wrighty's Merc. And I clocked you, and I said, "Hey, what are you doing?" Oh. And we we shared we we, we exchanged a, a conversation. You knew one of the stewards and stuff. Nice guy. And that was our first connection. Mm. So I've seen you grow from the supporters club. I've seen you grow up over the years. So now you're doing stuff for Arsenal. A lot of people don't know your history. Yeah. I know the history. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people just, you know, hate on you, but I know where you come from. Yeah, I man. know yeah, where you are. This here, my dad, right, he's got this really bad, I can't really say bad, but he likes collecting things, yeah. shall we say, and he keeps them in pristine condition. Now this, you can see, is March the 29th, 1994. And look at the condition of this. This is when we went out to Paris at the Parc du Prince, and there you are, Kevin Campbell. Mm -hmm. He's 24. 24. Oh, feels a long time ago, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it feels like it's yesterday, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. You know, I look at things like this, and like you said, with um, what went on that day, Ian Wright scored, David Ginola equalised. That's right. No one gave us a prayer. And then it leads me on to this one here, <laughs> which is the programme for the second leg against Paris Saint-Germain at Highbury. Now, we know Wrighty on the front there, um, but what's significant about that is that we won the game 1-0 to go to the Cup Winners' Cup final, and who scored the winning goal that day? I got the winning goal that day, but I weren't even supposed to be playing. George Graham had been preparing the team um, after the weekend's game, and I wasn't down to play. And nobody knows why he made the change last minute. He just said, Kev, you playing. And nobody knows why. Even I don't know why. But it turned out to be the right, right decision. That's I got the winner. Um, Lee Dixon cross on a header. Off the court. In. Caught Lam um, Lamar out in the, in the uh, PSG yeah. goal. He thought he was going to cross it. He thought he was going to cross it. I tried to get it in the near post. Luckily, it, it went in. That was a tough game. That was they. They were serious side. George Ware, Valdo, the Brazilian. They're some they top players. Look, when good side. Oh, they were a good side. And he, even towards the end of there, it was. It felt like it, our back to against the wall because if you remember right, he picked up a yellow card and it meant he was going to miss the bad. final. He lost his um, head and his head went a little bit. 
Um, but for me, my memory of that, uh, <laughs> and this will make you laugh, but after the game, we'd all finished and we'd all came out um, and we we're on Avenal Road and we're down by um, just past where the marble halls are. And on the first level was where the changing rooms were. That's right. And there was you, Ian Wright, and out, a few out others. Of out of the window. Out of the window. Out of the window. Out of the window. Just spraying champagne That's over right. the fans and everything else. Sharing and it. Exactly. We sharing wanted to share that it. moment. We wanted to share it. And the bit that stood out for me was right, he disappeared. And you lot are all oblivious to what's going on. And you'd been throwing out shirts and everything else. The next thing, right, he's come back. And he starts throwing out your suits, the players' <laughs> shirts, shoes. ties, shoes, every, and you could see the likes of, of Seaman and whatnot come running over trying to grab it. <laughs> Stop throwing my stuff! And it was just, but the bond and the connection between the fans and the players was so close, tight. Very Do you know close. what I mean? And that's what leads me on to present Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Now I I see such a divide within the club right now, whether it's fans and former players. A lot of players that played under Arsene Wenger, there's a split there. You've got ones that will defend him mm -hmm. to the hilt. Um, even Robert Pires mm -hmm. recently has come out and said he's the right man for the job. And then you've got players like Manu Petit, who says he shouldn't be there no more. Mm -hmm. You know, he should go. You never played under Arsene, so you can give a kind of you know, neutral mm -hmm. perspective on what you feel. But what do you feel is going on at Arsenal right now when you're looking from the outside in? Well, this is obviously very close to, to, to me, to, very close, dear to my heart. You know, Arsenal don't seem to be the club that it was. Mm. Even when Arsene Wenger was there uh, early, because they, he used to nick players like Thierry Henry and Patrick Vieira, who were gems that needed a bit of polishing. But remember, Burkamp was there. They bought Burkamp, so mm. we're looking at buying the best. They bought Mark Overmars. You know, they bought that type of player who's a difference maker. But 12 years ago, 13, 12 years ago, I think the philosophy changed a little bit. Um, obviously, the Emirates was, we're talking about the Emirates and being able to compete because we know money was coming into the game and other clubs were getting oligarchs and all this kind of caper. And the dream was sold to Arsenal fans. Yeah. And what was said was, because I'm an Arsenal fan, the dream was we'll be able to compete if we get a bigger stadium because at Highbury, which was capacity just over 40,000, we couldn't compete. Yeah. We get 60,000, then they, were, they said, well, we've got to pay for the stadium first. So obviously, Arsene Wenger was, play, was managing the playing staff, managing the expectation, but balancing the books, which mm. is great for the club. The fans swallowed it for a decade. Yeah. That's the key. The fans swallowed that for a decade. Then when we knew that the stadium was paid for, everybody's expecting, right, here we go, yeah. we're going to have a right go at it. But it hasn't materialised. And I think the internal combustion of the fans, that's, that's why there's so many clashes. Because, yeah, Arsene Wenger has done a fantastic job. I don't think anybody disagrees with that. No. But as a manager, you must want to have the best team. You must want to sign the best players. Or else what are you in it for? Yeah. And I think that's the problem that you may have with other, other people because they're saying, you know, Wenger's done a great job. He has done a great job. But the way we're looking at it now, from top to bottom of the club, they don't want to be the best. Mm. It seems to me, and this is my opinion, it seems to me that profit seems to outweigh the product on the pitch. Yeah. And that, you've got it back when. You yeah. got it backward because the product on the pitch should propel the club forward. Yeah, you make more money if the product on the pitch is better. Of course, of course, everything just seems not Arsenal like anymore. It's not the Arsenal anymore. That's how I feel as a fan. And it's, do you feel that Arsene Wenger has got too much power at Arsenal? Do you think that's a problem? Uh, um, I think Arsene Wenger has got the power. I think Arsene Wenger's earned having power. Mm. But has he got too much power now to make a change? Yes, I do. So I answer that the same way because Arsene Wenger's earned the power, but he's probably got too much power now because he's not making change. He's happy the way things are. So how is anything going to change if you're not going to, if you're not going to hurt people? 
Mm. You've got to be able to hurt people to, to be better. Yeah. And obviously this, the current squad are not good enough to win the title, they're not. What do we do as fans though? Because you know full well what I've done over the past few years with banners and everything else and I've expressed my opinion. Mm. And the reason why I've done this is because I feel that we don't get heard as fans. Back in the day when you were playing, we knew that we could get to the club. If we had a problem, we could talk to the club and they listened to yes. us. Now, it's like they don't care. You look at the recent AGM and the way that um, Sir Chips Keswick dismissed the fans. Shareholders, people that have put Hard their life... Hard-earned money, hard yeah, money. You know, the, the yeah. Arsenal's their life. Yeah. And they just dismiss you like you're a nobody. So, what do we do as fans? Do we just accept it? And I, I said after the Man City game in my interview that maybe we need to lower our expectations as fans. And that's how I felt at that time. At time. And then reflecting on that, I sat there and thought to myself, why should, why should I you? lower my expectations? Why? Why can I not want to win the league title? Why can I not want to win the Champions League? When I watched Chelsea win the Champions League, it cut me to pieces. When I watched Chelsea lift the title or Man United, it cuts me to pieces. It used to cut me to pieces back in the day, mm -hmm. but there was a difference. We can change it. Your challenge, of course. Look, before every season, we used to have a meeting and the manager used to say, we know what we want, we want to win everything. If you can win trophies, go and win it. Mm. But that's the mentality of the club from the top down. The mentality of the club isn't to win. What can fans do? Fans will always support the club. Whether there's in, in fighting or not, fans will always support the club because Arsenal Football Club is, is in your blood. But what you can do, you, can, you, you must keep um, challenging. Mm. Keep asking the questions. You have to, because the moment you keep quiet, you won't be heard. You will not be heard. You've got to keep, and I'm not saying banners and all that kind of thing. But if, if that's the way you protest, that's the way you protest. But you, the hard questions have to keep being asked because I ask them, mm. I'm a fan. So if I'm gonna ask them, everyone should ask them. Yeah. Why aren't we competing? Why aren't we signing world-class players? We've now got the 60,000 seat stadium. We've now got um, it paid for. We were told we'll be competing. Well, we'll Ivan Gazidis said that we would be competing with the likes of Bayern Munich. Our last three matches against Bayern Munich, we've lost 5-1 every single game. Yeah. And as far as I'm concerned, that's not competing, that's embarrassing. It is embarrassing, but you, look, you go into the game hoping. Yeah. You don't go into the game knowing. There's always hope. This is the difference. When you go into a game knowing you're going to compete. Yeah. But you go in hoping. That's yeah. the difference. This, this is the, the, what you said there is very true because we went to the Man City game and I'd spoken to Robbie and a few others beforehand and I said, my heart tells me one thing, my head tells me another. Mm -hmm. My heart will always say we're going to win every single game yeah. without fail. My head says, stop talking out of your backside because Man City are going to batter us. And that's the reality. But I never ever remember going into games feeling like that. I used to feel, even if a team was better at that time. You've just hit the nail on the head. You used to feel going in, you used to know you had a chance. You used mm. to know you can win. You used to know you can win. Now you're going into games apprehensive, you're hoping. That ain't Arsenal. Your brain. Because you've had it for such a long time. It's hard to let go of it. Yeah. And maybe the people upstairs don't know it because they've never been in it. They don't care. Listen, I'm sure they care, but they care at a cost. Yeah. And That's the problem. They're earning their money. They care at a cost because if Arsenal, if Arsenal don't qualify for the Champions League this season, mm -hmm. it's going to start hitting them in the pocket. Yeah. And then what they're going to do? If we don't qualify for the Champions League this year, do you think Arsenal should walk away? Me personally, I think Arsenal. It was perfect for Arsenal to walk away after the FA Cup win against Chelsea. Yeah. He kept very quiet about what he's going to be doing this season. Mm -hmm. He strung everybody along, really. 
And then, yeah. Arsenal, let's be fair, Arsenal produced in the final against Chelsea at, at Wembley. They produced. Yeah, even the semi final against Man City. Yeah, semi final. But, you know, you get to Chelsea in the final, it was like everyone, was like, oh, God. Again, hoping mm. Arsenal turn up. Arsenal turned up and done the business. Fantastic win. It would have been awesome, awesome, well done. Thanks for everything. But now, this season could get toxic again. There's every chance it could get toxic. And I, yeah. I don't like Arsenal being toxic. No. I like Arsenal moving forward. Yeah. But I think it could get toxic again. This, this is the thing, and this is what people don't understand with myself. People seem to think that I enjoy the toxic atmosphere. I don't enjoy it. I go to the games with my children and everything else. Um, and one of my sons is seven years old and he started coming and I've got my eldest one that's 17 years old. That's How is he, by the way? Hey, he, Kieran's good. He's all right. He's, yeah, he's, he's on the mend. He's out of plaster now. And um, yeah, it's the road to recovery. So, you know, I know yourself, you, your oldest boy, he plays professionally as well. So, yeah. And they're the same age. So right. might end up coming against you each other one day. You, you never, never know. know. So, you never know. But I, I've been to games this season already. And Watford was a prime example for me. And I said this to Robbie that 15 minutes before the end of the game, we won the up. You're kind of nervous because obviously you want to win the game, but there's smiles on everyone's faces. You're winning, it's fine. Mm -hmm. 15 minutes later, we've lost the game 2 1, and everyone's singing Wenger out. And that is how close you are from being here to there. And I feel that the board, Arson, and everyone else has created that environment by prolonging the estate, mm -hmm. being there for too long. And I can't, as you said, see anything but it getting worse. And the reason why I say this because it leads me on to this perfectly. We've got a certain game this weekend, mm. the North London derby. Yeah. Ah. This, this game has more meaning than a lot of derbies before, by the way. Yeah. This has a big meaning for me. Um, see, I, the hairs are on me. Exactly. You because know, I think of it and I'm just... This has a, a more significant meaning now. Because of, obviously, Tottenham have been doing, doing fine. They've been doing great. Let's be honest with you. I hate admitting it. Obvious, uh, yeah, whether we like it or not, whether, you know, whether we like it or not, whether we like it or not, they've been doing, they've been doing better than us. Yeah. And I don't like it. So we need to put a marker, a marker down and say, listen, yeah, you might have been doing well, but, but not at our graph. And it's at the Emirates. And it's early morning kickoff. Mm -hmm. And temp te temperature is going to be red on, and it's a it's a chance for us to bring them down a peg or two. Exactly, because the thing is that I look at is that yes, they are doing so well, but they still haven't won a trophy. Um, and when we had you know around about the two thousand and seven eight time when we had the Fabregas's and Nasries and stuff, mm -hmm. we played amazing football. Everyone talked about how great we were, but we never won a trophy. Yeah. And when you go. In, in history in years from now, you will never remember our 08 team. You will remember last year's team because they actually won an FA Cup. Won a, a cup yeah. You know, you're never going to remember Deli Ali and Harry Kane and stuff if they don't win a trophy. That's right. Um, and, but you've played in the North London derby and what was it like in the week leading up to the North London <laughs> two derby? Weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. It was always two weeks. Because you know it's coming. Yeah. And all the staff are at you. <laughs> you know, there's a, a guy there who's Paul Johnson. He's been at the club years. Paul Johnson used to say, because me and him take Dillinger to each other, always old school reggae. He said, listen, you know what's coming up. And we all, here's some Dillinger, don't worry. <laughs> Dillinger, don't worry, we got it covered. And that used to start two weeks out, even though there was a game on a Saturday, because we know it's coming. He was hyped. We're hyped. Because remember, we're coming through the ranks. We yeah. feel it like the fan. Listen, that's why that semi-final loss, when Gaza, the, the, when Gaza done the business, when I tell you, it knocked the squad. We, luckily, we went on to win the league, but mm -hmm. we, we, we wanted that desperately. But to get the revenge. Tony Adams. Tony Adams. Got 10 minutes to go. Bosh, get right. that, that for us was, We've put it right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We've put it right. We yeah. had to put it right. All of that retribution. So this weekend has massive significance. And look, how many players are in the squad who actually feel it? You know, Jack Jack Jack, Jack, Jack feels yeah. it because he's a he's a he's a he's a he's a Arsenal boy. 
But I don't know. Of course, they want to win. Yeah. But but do they know what it really means? It, it, exactly. I, I question that. Mm. I don't question them as players. I question them understanding actually what it means. See, now I want to get into the mind quickly of in that changing room because this is a, a chance for people that will never ever get to see this. When you've had your warm up, mm -hmm. when you're playing against Tottenham, you've had your warm up, you go into the changing room at Highbury 10 minutes before kickoff. What happens in that 10 minutes before you go out? Who's, is it George Graham? Is it Tony Adams? Is it a collectiveness of you all? Well, it was funny. It's, it, it was actually funny. What we did, it was 10 minutes before, George Graham would just be putting his final points in. And then we're calm. We'll be calm. We've done the warm up. Everybody's doing their bits and pieces and George Graham's just getting down the game plan. Soon as George Graham finishes that, Rodders will get up. And then all hell's breaking loose <laughs> because he's coming up to you and he's in your face and he's, he's picking you up and he's saying, Listen, you make sure you, exactly that, that steal. Yeah. You know. Well, there's a saying in football that we always have at Arsenal, you know, you've got to earn the right to play. Mm. You've got to earn it. And how you earn it, you dominate your opponent. Yeah. And that's what we used to do. We used to dominate our opponents. So he's making sure everybody knows, right, and we, our units are together and we're going to go and dominate them. That's it. And that's why when it was the old song, 1-0 to the Arsenal, because as soon as we got 1-0 up, it was total domination. We dominated our opponent. Teams and, and we, we suffocated them because they couldn't get out. What was the tunnel like at Highbury in that? Did, a lot of people say that it was, you had beaten teams before that. You know, before you even went out, was it, was that how it really felt yeah, in that because, tunnel? You know, tunnel? It, it was um, it was kind. Of, it, it weren't just a, a straight tunnel. It was a step tunnel. It was a long step, so it kind of went down, and and then you got the bottom bit, and then that led out to you, you could see the west end. So when you're in there, you could hear the clink of the other boots, and most majority of the time, the away team were waiting on us. So when we come out and we line up. And we were a big side as well, yeah. just big strong side. Big guys. And you know, they weren't all this, you know, hugging and shaking hands and all mm. that in the tunnel. No. We'll do all that after. But for now, you're... Yeah, we're going to, we want to dominate you. So that's what we've done, we want to dominate. So we've got, most of us stunt face, you might let on to somebody, how are you doing, all right? And that's it. Out, get stuck into them. That's it. That was hybrid for us. No, Get stuck it. into Job it. Done. Because we knew the fans respond to that. Yeah. Fans do respond to the team making tackles and, and being aggressive with the team. And then scoring goals. Yeah. You know, winning games, that's winning cures all, doesn't it? There you go. Um, finally, because we've run out of time. No, um, no way. <laughs> I could actually <laughs> I <need> part two. <laughs> I could sit and talk to you forever. Even when you talk about the 1-0 to the Arsenal, it makes me remember. We're talking about that semi-final in Paris. That's where the song was created right. at half time because um, people that don't know very quickly, um, the, they played Pet Shop Boys Go West on the Antanoi. That, that's right, yeah. And we were one new up, Ian Wright scored, and someone just started changing the words from Go West to one new to, to the, the Arsenal. Up, and that's, that's right. how it started. So you look at that, but what I want to ask you quickly is, what do you see for the future of Arsenal? Do you feel that we can get back to being you know, one of those major clubs that the team's fear? No, Arsenal are a major club, but I understand what you mean. You're talking about getting the product back on the pitch. Yeah. Yeah, of course Arsenal could. And Arsenal could do it very quickly. But the people upstairs have to have that mindset of being the best. Yeah. If you're, if you're trying to be the best, you have to compete with the best. Yeah. And you have to go and get these players that are going to make a difference. You've got to get world-class players. Yeah. I mean, you look at the likes of Man City and Man United, they're buying world-class players. They ain't messing around. Yeah. Mourinho's gone in at United, they ain't messing around. Pep Guardiola's gone at City, not messing around. So that's what Arsenal have to do. I'd love to see Arsenal go for it. Mm. Go for it, we all would. But will it happen? I don't know. But can Arsenal do it? 100% they can. Finally, prediction for Saturday? I think Arsenal are going to win. Yeah, I'll say 2-1. 2-1. 2-1 Arsenal. Don't care who scores, just get I the goals. I don't care. The <laughs> like I said, Arsenal winning cures all for me. Kevin, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. For thank you. Me. Thank you for having me. And uh, I look forward to doing it again, hopefully sometime Definitely. soon. Definitely. You heard it here. We will do another part two. And um, thank you to everyone for watching. And uh, 
I'm out of here. Thank you.